greater or equals to the work function. Meaning that now, if a light is shown onto a metal or is irradiated on that metal, and then there is no electron ejected from the metal uh, in this case, therefore it means that now that oncoming radiation, the energy of a photon of that radiation is less than the work function. Hence, no electron is ejected. And once again also, if the photon of that radiation has got the energy that is equal to the work function, then it means that now the electrons will be ejected, but are they going to be able to move? No, because there is no energy that is remaining to can be uh, give, uh, give those electrons and energy to move off the metal. Therefore, now comes another part to say, if the energy of an oncoming radiation to the metal, in this case, let's say for argument's sake, this is our metal, which is maybe might be zinc or sodium, no problem. Now, the electrons here are vibrating with the same frequency or got the same energy as the work function of the metal. Now, if the energy of a photon of the oncoming radiation, for argument's sake, it's a 3 by 10 to exponent minus 19 joules. And the work function is said to be, let's say, 2 by 10 to exponent minus 19 joules. Therefore, what happens to the other energy? Remember, we know the principle of conservation of energy, that energy will neither be destroyed nor created, but it can change from one form to another. Therefore, the remaining energy, if this one is 3 by 10 to exponent minus 19 joules, and the work function, uh, the electrons can absorb uh, 2 by 10 to exponent minus 19. Therefore, the remaining 1 by 10 to exponent minus 19 will be converted into the kinetic energy. So that is will be converted into motion. Remember, when the object possesses kinetic energy, they are able to move in the physics section. Now... In this case, so this is the formula that we'll be using now to say energy of an oncoming radiation, if it's a incident on a metal with a work function, therefore a certain amount of energy will be uh, absorbed in the metal and in the form of work function. And then the remaining energy will be now uh, converted into the energy in motion that is a maximum kinetic energy that will enable the electron to be ejected and move off the metal. So now, what if I'm not given the energy of radiation? There are two more options. I can be given the frequency that will enable me to calculate the energy of radiation. If the frequency is not given, I can also be using the HC over lambda to calculate the energy of that uh, oncoming radiation, the photon on, of the oncoming radiation. In case of the metal, if I'm given work function, it's fine. But if not given work function, then the, I, I have to be given the threshold frequency that will enable me to calculate the work function. If the threshold frequency is not given, then I can also... Uh, be given opportunity to calculate the work function using what you call the threshold wavelength. It's fine. In the case of uh, maximum kinetic energy, if I'm not calculating kinetic energy or I'm not given it, then they must give me the speed of the ejected electrons. So this will be the formula where the ME, we call it electron mass. So electron mass, this is a constant value in the formula sheet. You'll find it as 9.11 by 10 to exponent negative uh, 31 kilogram. This is a constant value for any electron that is ejected will have this kind of uh, mass. So this is what is happening when the electron, this one, uh, electrons are ejected on the metal surface by means of that uh, radiation energy. Fine. Now, if we take this formula and form 
just two simple graphs. Let's say, for example, we've got this formula of E equals to WO plus EK max. Now I want to make the EK max a subject of the formula. I will end up with EK max uh, equals to E minus WO. Um, now to simplify it further, I can have EK max equals to HF minus WO. Therefore, in my graph, if this is the case, then I will be having this type of a graph whereby the horizontal axis becomes frequency and the vertical axis, if I put this one in the form of y equals to mx plus c, the vertical axis will be my kinetic energy in joules. And then this might be the graph, which is a straight line graph. Now, the point where the graph touches both the x-axis or the horizontal axis and the vertical axis, this point here will be representing the work function, which is the value of c. And this point here, which is the frequency, this frequency whereby the kinetic energy is zero, Therefore, if the kinetic energy is zero, you will be equating this to HF equals to HFO. Therefore, you will end up with if HF equals to HFO. Therefore, H cancels H. Therefore, that frequency will be our threshold frequency. Now, the other question can ask about the slope of the graph. What does the slope of the graph represent? Therefore, in this case... Uh, the slope, which is the same as M, which is your delta Y over delta X, if we take from mathematical perspective. Therefore, the slope of this graph, it will be uh, represented by, in this case, the Planck's constant. Therefore, it meaning that if you want to calculate the slope of the, the, the this one, the Planck's constant, you can use the slope of this one. That's how it was found. And therefore, the M represent uh, H. Hence, if, we can, if I can have another metal, if I draw it from here, the question might be why the two graphs are parallel. They are parallel because the slope represents the same constant, which is the Planck's constant. So that is the one part. The other graph, out of curiosity, the one examiner, instead of giving... Uh, maybe the, the they can still have EK max here, but instead of frequency, the examiner can just give you 1 over lambda. If it's 1 over lambda, still having like the same graph, like this one. So now with the work function, the only change will be in the case of the M. Therefore, I will still have EK max equals to now hc over lambda minus wo therefore which means that the slope of this line now will represent the two constant which is hc that's how it is that is how the examiner can go beyond this one and give you the graphs i think these tips don't forget that the where the graph touches the x-axis or the horizontal axis is the threshold frequency and the slope of this graph is the Planck's constant. And then where the graph touches the y-axis, which is the vertical axis, that negative value here will represent a negative work function. Therefore, you can equate the two and then find the value of the work function for that type of a metal. Now, the next part in this section, it's about... <clears throat> um, let's... To just a simple calculation, maybe. Um, the first calculation example, let's say example before we come to the explanation part, examples. And now find the energy of a photon. Of a photon with wavelength of wavelength of 
um, 2 by 10 to exponent minus 7 meters. Just a three mark question. This one, straightforward. What do we do? We know that the energy of a photon is calculated using E equals to HF. Therefore, in this case, I'm not given F, I'm given uh, the lambda. Therefore, this will be also the same as your HC over lambda. Now I've got the two values. Then 6.63, when you substitute, multiply by 10 to exponent minus 34, multiply by 3 by 10 to exponent 8, which is the speed of light in air and then divide by the given value of 2 by 10 to exponent minus 7. So if you use your calculator, you'll get the answer in joules. In this case, I think uh, it makes sense to you. And uh, I will come with further calculations for now. Let's pause and then find more questions on this one before we come to explanations and emission and absorption spectrum.